That's what they are, biological or not. That's what good, good men do. That's what righteous men do. That's what men who are Christians do. They take on the responsibility. And I know that there are many, many, many homes where God has brought families together and both women and men have taken on the responsibility of raising kids that they're not biologically connected to. Blessed are you in that responsibility that God calls you to do. And young people, blessed is that person that God has brought into your household to do that. I don't know what I would have done if I was Joseph. But I have something in common with all of you is that we're all flawed human beings. There's no, not one amongst us that is perfect. The Bible said that all of us have fell short of God's glory, sinned and fell short of God's glory. We're all flawed people. Sometimes it's, we go down the path of holding such standards for people that's an impossible for them to fulfill. But when we look at this story of Mary and Joseph, we see a young couple. Can you imagine what they faced in their day? To, can, can you imagine what what their life was? Could you imagine what went through Mary's heart? Could you imagine that conversation? But they did the right thing. They were obedient to God and God blessed them. And the same grace that Joseph showed to Mary, I believe, you know, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall in that carpenter, carpentry shop between Joseph and Jesus. Because Joseph was Jesus' father. Can you imagine some of the things that they would have talked about? Hey, Dad, tell me, really, what was it like, man, when the angel told you that Mom was going to be pregnant with me? Can you imagine some of the things that they talked about? Because last week, God brought to us the, the commonness of Jesus. I mean, his name, who he was. There's a real person with real feelings. Yes, fully man and fully God. I believe that oftentimes we refer to the virgin birth as the miracle. Traditionally, we say that the virgin birth was a miracle. Friends, it wasn't the virgin birth that was the miracle. It was the virgin conception that was the miracle. I know that's a technical point, but I think it's important for us to remember that. And I believe that the Bible teaches in Matthew's gospel and Luke's gospel that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin. And quite honestly, that's enough for me. I believe it. But this belief, this critical, important part of our faith can be such a milestone for us to overcome. It can be such, such a milestone for the world to overcome. A virgin conception. A physician once asked, and perhaps you've asked the same question that he asked, Reverend, I delivered a baby this morning, and the young woman said the boy had no human father. Would you believe her? Good question. I believe the answer to us today is the same answer that was given to the doctor. You know, if the woman's son was born for the fulfillment of Scripture, if people who didn't even know him came from such a far distance to worship him, if he grew up as a child and was able to minister to the sick, to heal the lame, to help the blind to see and even walk, and he could raise the dead back to life, and after he was murdered and killed 
and nailed on a tree that death had no victory over him and he rose from the grave and it's documented that the curtain of the temple was torn in two so that there would be no separation between God and men. If all of these things came true because of her birth, that her son's birth, then yeah, I would believe. What about you? Jesus Christ, the Son of God, born on this day that we call Christmas. A supernatural God, a supernatural conception, and a supernatural eternity that we all look for in His coming. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, Lord, thank You for being a God that Lord, that through you all things can be possible, the scripture says. Sometimes it's difficult for us to grasp things that just are. But we know that your word is true and we know that scripture is true and we know that, Father, that you are the creator. We can't always have it all figured out in our minds how things happen. And that's why you... Share with us that faith is believing in what cannot be seen. But often along the way, Father, we struggle. And perhaps here today there's somebody that's struggling. May we understand. May we accept. May we have a fresh anointing, a special touch that would help us to move forward in our faith in such a way that we would become radically in love with you, Jesus. That through your whole spirit, Holy Spirit, which indwells us, that mighty things would be done for the kingdom. That the light which burns inside of our hearts would burn so brightly that people would notice that we are different, that they would be attracted to hear. And may we boldly share the hope that we have in you, Jesus. Father, I pray that as we leave this week and as we continue for our hearts to grow, I pray that they would be filled with hope, that they would be filled with love, that they would be filled with joy, that we would have peace that would abound, and that you would bring us back here on Christmas Eve, that we might light the candle of Christ in celebration for the one who is, who was, and is, and is to come. Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray.